Cortex Labyrinthus is a space prog song where I would say the main inspiration were the bands like Rush and Pink Floyd. Uh, when it comes to the lyrics, mainly Rush, especially their late 70s works like 2112 or the records like Farewell to Kings or Hemispheres. And when it comes to the music, it's like a combination of Rush and Pink Floyd, even though there's one more influence, which I'm gonna mention later. This song describes one of the good pursuits, which is a pursuit of happiness, but I'm not gonna talk about the lyrics in this video, there's gonna be a separate video for that, so be sure to check that out. But when it comes to the lyrics, I wrote it in, in summer 2017, at the time when I was finishing the song, but when it comes to the music, there are parts from various years of my life, so let's look at it. This song is divided into four parts. The first part is called Doubts in the Dark and it has 4 minutes and 42 seconds and this is mainly based on a song I wrote in 2011. At that time I was already thinking about my second album even though my first album wasn't even out yet but I, I already knew at that time that I wanted my second album to be using more of acoustic guitars. I wanted more acoustic guitars on that album and this little track, it was like two minutes long, was supposed to be an intro for an album. So that bass theme that you hear, that was actually what I was supposed to play on the guitar. Most of that remained here, I extended that part, but the chorus that is in part one was written in approximately the late August 2017, so midway throughout rehearsals maybe a couple of weeks before we started rehearsing the song. Part 2, Clues for the Maze, that has 5 minutes and 35 seconds, is based on a song that I wrote in 2012. And this song was supposed to be on my second album and it was supposed to follow that acoustic intro, so that's why these two songs really fit together very well. What remained from that original song are verses. main theme that you hear on bass. Maze. Very interesting thing about the main theme in part two is that we have uh, first part or first half is in 8-4 time signature. Of course you can say it's 4-4 time signature but I prefer 8-4 because then the second half it changes to 7-4 time signature and I think it creates much more urgent feeling and it's uh, something that you will perceive as something odd. When it comes to the bridge, I wrote it in summer, so uh, this is one of the newer parts when I was putting the whole song together. I came up with these bridges that were in a way based on the original chorus, but I will come back to that later. And the chorus that we hear twice in part two and then at the end of the song is from a song I wrote in 2014. I think like two years ago or three years ago I ordered all of my themes and ideas. It took me like 10 hours to put them all in different folders so that I would know what to look for. And I found out this song and I immediately fell in love with the chorus because there's just so much emotion and I really loved it. The original chorus was actually written 
one and a half steps lower because the song where it was was in different key. ended up being the outro of the song. Where we have sort of like a climax that explodes into that big riff. Then we have the part where first just the bass plays the riff, then piano comes in and eventually we have a relatively squeaky, crazy saxophone solo. This is another part that I wrote in summer 2017 when completing the song. When it comes to the part 3 called Allergy for Light, this is a part that was written again in the late summer 2017. A couple of months before that I really got into Leprous. When I was listening to their music many times I thought to myself that it would be cool to sing those melodies or to write music like that. And I think that this part was a perfect opportunity to pay homage to one of my favorite bands. When it comes to the part 4, that's mainly based on the chorus that I've already talked about, but uh, before that we have a saxophone solo that really comes at the moment where the whole song is just building up. There's a lot of darkness and eventually the song explodes into a very relaxed, uplifting, and much more accessible saxophone solo. This was to really emphasize the story of the song and the musical progression. When I was explaining the song to Stevie I knew that I wanted a part that would really enable saxophone player to come up with a beautiful melody and there were some chord progressions that we tried that I came up with but it was essentially the Stevie's suggestion that ended up being in a song <laughs> 